So I chose to break down this project into multiple parts and the first part being to draw a picture of a mason jar. Now I actually drew the mason jar myself, but if you are somebody who is struggling with drawing a picture of a mason jar, I would suggest printing out a picture and transferring it to the watercolor paper. So this is where it starts to get fun. I started by using a red oil pastel to trace the mason jar lid. Now, of course you can use whatever color you want. If you want to use a gray or a black or even a magenta, it's totally up to you. I just chose red because I felt like it. After I was done tracing the lid, I took a white oil pastel and I traced the remaining parts of my mason jar. Now, all of this tracing with the oil pastel is meant to keep our watercolor from spreading everywhere. So the next step is to take a yellow oil pastel and draw what I would call starburst effects. These will act as the light that's coming off of your light bugs. I would highly encourage you to draw different sizes, big and small, because this will determine the size light bug that you make for that particular light. After that step, you're gonna go back to the white oil pastel and draw a bunch of little dots on the inside. This will act as little stars, if you will, inside the mason jar. So now it's time to bring out the watercolor. We're gonna be doing what's called a wet on wet technique with watercolor. It's where you have to actually wet the paper first before you put down any paint. And as you can see, just a little dab of paint and then it'll just spread on its own. It's super cool. So after you're done painting the mason jar lid, you're gonna do the exact same technique with the inside of the mason jar. Now, I chose to use the cool colors and just a hint of magenta, but of course you are more than welcome to use whatever colors you'd like. Now, as you can see, whenever you put the paint down, those white dots that we drew earlier are gonna magically appear. They were kind of hard to see before, but because of the resistance that we get with the oil pastels, you can actually see them now, even though we're putting watercolor on top. So for this next step, I actually made my own mason jar stencil behind the scenes, and I would highly encourage you to do that as well. So after you've made your own stencil out of construction paper, I took a yellow soft pastel and I just lightly colored the edge of my stencil. And you'll see why in a second. So after that, you're going to just lightly with the finger or with the tissue if you prefer, and you're gonna spread out that soft pastel. This will create an awesome glow effect with our mason jar and our light bugs. So after you've removed your stencil, you're gonna reveal the awesomeness that is that glow effect. And afterwards, we're gonna go ahead and draw our light bugs. So I already have a light bug completely drawn, traced, and colored off to the corner, just so you get a little sneak peek of what we're making. But basically, you're gonna start by making two circles as if you're making a snowman, and you're gonna add little pizza slices that will be his wings. After you have those steps, I'm gonna trace everything with a Sharpie because it just makes it a lot cleaner. If you don't have a Sharpie, you can use a black marker. After you've done that, I would highly encourage you to take an eraser and just quickly get rid of any pencil marks that you have remaining. So this next step, I use crayons, but you're more than welcome to use any type of coloring medium that you have at your disposal. I started by coloring his head just a solid black, but then I moved to his body with an orange. Now, as you can see, I didn't color all of his body with orange. I left just a little bit of a ring around the edge because this will give off the awesome glow effect, which is what we need for a light bug. And I did the same thing with his wings. I took a blue crayon, just lightly colored the edge, and then I colored the insides with yellow. I drew seven fireflies because I have seven yellow spots inside my mason jar. So if you have more than seven spots, you need to make sure that you're drawing and cutting out more than seven fireflies. After you've cut out your fireflies, be sure to carefully cut out your mason jar. So for this next step, you're gonna need a piece of foam board, and from there, you're gonna cut out just enough pieces so that each of your firefly has a piece glued to the back. This will help make your fireflies pop out of your mason jar. So for these last steps, all we need to do is just glue everything together. Mm -hmm. 